Thanks for tuning in to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Matt Dowling serving the 51st Legislative District in Fayette and Somerset Counties. Today we are here at Tall Pines Distillery in Salisbury, PA, where they make some great moonshine products and we're gonna get inside to talk about those in just a couple minutes. Um, but the grounds here are just fantastic and, and beautiful. Um, I know you have a, a space on the side of the building you use for some summer events. So before we head inside, why don't you tell me a little bit about that space? Yeah, we're planning on doing some events there uh, this summer. We'll have food trucks. Uh, we always use local, try to use as many local people as we can. So we'll have the food trucks there, hopefully do some live entertainment, and then uh, also serve cocktails along with that, made with our products. That's great. Now also as kind of a showpiece in front of the front door, uh, you have quite an interesting car. And I know there's a little bit of a backstory about the vehicle, uh, how it was made. Uh, why don't you tell me about the car? Yeah, that is um, that was made on a show called Roadhawks. It was on the History Channel, can be streamed on there. It was an hour program. Uh, History Channel was trying to do uh, this these car builds with a, another Pennsylvania business out of Chambersburg, and um, they were. Uh, they wanted to do a history on bootlegging and moonshining, so they built this custom car for us, and uh, it ended up being such a good advertising piece. We let that be part of our primary advertising. It draws a lot of people in. People like to come in and see it. Oh yeah, we get a lot of people just traffic stopping by here. Now with the highway finish, we're getting a lot more traffic, so they stop in, check it out, come in and buy a bottle, so pretty so good what, billboard. What got you into moonshining? Well, um, just decided I've been contracting for 35 years. It's been pretty rough on the body, so I decided uh, it's time to do something that wouldn't be quite so rough on my body. So uh, this is hopefully my retirement. And Pennsylvania started easing up the laws in 2013. We started doing some research and just decided to do it. I was never much of a drinker before that, but I decided, and I'm still not much of a drinker, but I like to make, the, make it and uh, experiment with the different flavors. Sure, I know we're going to get inside and we're going to talk a little bit about the process you use, uh, look at the stills themselves, uh, look over some of the products. Um, so why don't we head inside and, uh, and we can take a look around. All right, sounds good. Well, we're inside with, uh, I guess, the still that kind of started the business off. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this still, how big it is, and uh, for those of us who don't know how moonshine is made, can I explain the process a little bit. Okay, yeah, this is a 60 gallon steel, so it's relatively small. Um, we've gotten to the point though that we're working it five to six days a week, so that, that's a good problem to have. Sure, sure. But that's just to keep up with the, uh, keep up with, uh, the demand. Um, we do small batch, everything's 55 gallon barrels. This is a 60 gallon steel. Um, all of our stuff, we try to locally source as much as possible, so we get the corn from a local feed mill, we get, uh, um, uh, peaches from Chambersburg, another Pennsylvania thing, and um, all our bananas, we get all local stores. So we do, uh, rather than just doing a corn liquor like everybody does in flavor, we actually use fruit for the mash. So our peaches is two bushels of peaches per batch. Um, we use 60 pounds of peeled bananas. We use apple cider that's provided from a local cider press uh, company. And um, that's what we use to do it. So uh, once we make our mash, if it's grain, we sift everything out. The liquid goes into here. Um, we're at about a 12% alcohol. So alcohol has a boiling point of 175. Uh, at 12%, about 192 degrees, it'll boil off. So this is a column that's filled with copper mesh. The alcohol works through there, any condensation falls back into the steel. As the gas goes through, it goes into a thump keg. A lot of the new distilleries don't use thump kegs because they are kind of a pain, but it makes, helps make the product smooth. Uh, so this pipe stops about an inch short of the bottom. Some of the mash goes into there. As the alcohol gas goes through, it condenses, evaporates again at about 176 degrees, and then as the gas it continues through, comes out liquid form as alcohol. So we have uh, some of our products right here that we do. Um, this is where we do all of our finishing. But because of the demand, we have not had quite enough. We're not having a problem keeping up, so we got a bigger steel. And we're going to look at that bigger steel in a couple minutes, but I know this being the finishing room uh, and your bottling in here, I, I, I was curious if you have to heat the product to bottle? Do you bottle at room temperature? What's, what's the process with bottling? You can bottle at room temperature. We do all of our flavoring here, um, but everything gets bottled at room temperature. Of course, it's alcohol, so 
Uh, as far as bacteria and problems like that, that's it's, you don't have it's to a worry non-issue. About that. <laughs> it's a non-issue. We're going to move back into the other room, look at kind of how the business has grown, talk about uh, some of the exciting things that are happening with the business. So why don't we head back All there? Right. So we're looking at a larger version of what we were looking at in the other room. I guess the business has grown, the steel has grown, um, but kind of explain this to me and what's the size? What are we dealing with here? So this is a thousand liter. Okay. We can do five times the amount of product in this steel as what we do in the other one. This is the thumb keg. So it's equivalent to the equivalent purpose to the other one, uh, but they base it on percentages, what you have to have. So we will, get uh, quite a bit of moonshine out of this. We should run about uh, 55 to 60 gallons that we get to finish. Um, we'll have about 30 gallons that'll be at 150 proof. And so we're, uh, this, we start at four o'clock this morning. One run of this all day will be till about 10 o'clock at night will be finished up. So that makes for a long day of shine. It does make for a long day. And how many days a week are you running this steel? This one we are running two days a week. We do it on uh, Mondays and Fridays, and then in between we do some of our specialty liquors out of the smaller steel yet. Now, I know you do a lot of your retail sales uh, in-house or direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're on some shelves in Maryland, but uh, as the business is growing, the, uh, the need for accessibility is also there, and uh, uh, excited to hear you're gonna be in some of our Pennsylvania State stores. Yeah, we're shooting uh, right now for 10 different stores. The program allows us to do 10 different stores. Um, we are uh, submitting six different products to those stores. And we're doing it all across the state. So we've got some as far out as Philadelphia to the east. And then uh, we're heading back towards uh, Pittsburgh uh, as far west. Now, uh, I, I always like to ask when I'm talking to small business owners about hurdles that you've had within the Commonwealth. Um, you know, we, we always say we are a, a old commonwealth. We have a lot of regulation. Um, what are some difficulties that you've had since you've set up your business uh, in working in Pennsylvania? Um, all in all, the state, as far as, as the laws allowing and working with distilleries is very good. Some of the other laws are a little bit difficult because of the uh, liquor stores being state controlled. Um, it's harder to get into that. Uh, now they're making it a little bit easier, but it's still gonna be limited. We're starting off with 10 stores. Um, the costs um, pretty much dictated to us as to how much they'll pay us for it. Really cuts into our profit, but if you wanna get your product out there, that's what you have to do. A Little bit of a state monopoly going on there. Yeah, yeah. It can be a little bit difficult with that, but um, uh, there's, uh, you see some of the uh, privatized states now that do that. It's easier, we're in Maryland, so that makes it nice to get it in there. You don't have any uh, slot fees that you pay or shelf space that you have to pay for. Um, those are some of the disadvantages. Funding is a little bit difficult, uh, probably more on the county level, I guess, as far as getting help and assistance in it. It's a lot to get into a business like this. So, uh, you know, we're trying to create jobs in the area and funding would be helpful because I don't have unlimited funds to keep things going and, and hire people. Sure, we are kind of in a, in a rural area, rural part of the district that I serve. Um, so jobs are always important when you're in communities like that. But we're in a great community for tourism, uh, right along the Gap Trail and- uh, Exactly. And, and not far from a uh, number of nice bed and breakfasts and, and places that people wanna be. So I think uh, you're a good complement to that industry but uh, the jobs are extremely important in these rural communities. I know we wanna get out there and look at some product, sample some product, and uh, why don't we do that out in your retail space? Okay, sounds good. Well, we're out here in uh, your retail space, the tasting room, I guess you would call it, and uh, you have a number of products. How many different flavors do you make? Uh, we have uh, 13 different flavors right now. Okay, uh, what's your personal favorite? My personal favorite is the pine sap. It's the pine cinnamon sap. and vanilla. Everybody okay. turns their nose thinking it's pine, but it's uh, cinnamon and vanilla. Okay. 
Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we give that a try? All right. Now, um, in an establishment like yours, I know there are some rules about the number of samples that a guest can have uh, when they come in. And of course, you're carding individuals that, uh, right. that are coming in. What are some of those policies? Uh, we do card, we card about everybody, even if they look like they're 70. So uh, we, we try to make that as a regular thing. We, the ramp program helps us. We're all ramp certified, so we make sure of that. Um, the other thing that we do is, uh, um, as far as samples, the federal government kind of has set it out as an ounce and a half total. Okay. So that's six quarter ounce samples. Um, we, we watch it and we'll adjust that a little bit, but yeah, we try to keep it at that. Uh, depending on some of the places that we do um, set up, they have their own laws, so they may only allow four samples. And sure. If that's the case, then we follow that. So this is your pine sap. Pine sap, cinnamon and vanilla, 80 proof. Well, that is very good, very good. Um, now, if someone wants to purchase, uh, we talked about some of the places that you're available, but if they want to learn more about your business, is there a website or some contact information that you'd like to get out there? Um, yeah, our website is tallpondsdistillery.com, um, and uh, it has all of our information on it, has recipes on it, uh, talks about how we got started, has our story. Also, uh, we're on social media, Instagram and Facebook, and we keep everybody updated anytime there's new flavors that are released, and um, we uh, make sure that we keep all that updated. And it, 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 the social media is wonderful advertising. Well, I thank you for sharing so much uh, uh, with me here today as a member of the Liquor Committee in the House, uh, you know, learning more about how our industry in Pennsylvania affects the uh, citizens of the Commonwealth is something that I'm putting time and energy into. Um, so today's tour was fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate your work on it. If you'd like more information about uh, my office or to contact me, visit www.repdowling.com or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter.